Hello, everyone. Welcome to Warner Media Access Nurturing Talent and Cultivating Careers. My name is Jane Yu, the director of the fourth annual Tide Film Festival. We are so excited to be able to gather in person again this year in Brooklyn. But as the world continues to open back up, we're also very grateful to have opportunities for virtual conversations like the one you're about to listen in on. We at Tide believe that filmmakers of color deserve to tell their truths with intent, to disrupt the mainstream narrative, and to feel entitled in their right to do so. We would like to thank our sponsor, Warner Media, for making this conversation possible and for their commitment to supporting and uplifting our communities. Warner Media Access is a slate of powerful programs designed to nurture underrepresented talent and build the foundations for sustainable careers in TV. Join Warner Media's Grace Moss, VP Equity and Inclusion, writer Elisa Lee, and director Faraday Okoro in a frank conversation on how to get in, what to expect, and where these programs can take you. Moderated by Deanna Cadet from Warner Media Access Canada, it will also share surprising insights for Canadian talent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jane, uh, for that lovely intro. And thank you, Ji Young, founder of the annual Tide Film Festival, for this wonderful forum. And hello to everyone in the audience and to our guests on the panel. My name is Deanna Cadet. I'm a Black woman with short hair, and I oversee the Warner Media Access Canada programs. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guests and dive into this topic. But before we get started, let's take a few minutes to recognize that no matter where we are in this virtual forum, that we are on the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples. The Tide Film Festival is located in Lenape Hoking, which is now called Brooklyn, on the unceded homeland of the Lenape people. We acknowledge today's Lenape community, communities, including the Delaware Nation and Delaware Tribe of Oklahoma, the Stockbridge Muncie community in Wisconsin, and the Muncie Delaware Nation, the Moravian of the Thames First Nation, and the Delaware of Six Nations in Ontario. I'm located in, located in Toronto, which you know as Toronto, Canada. And from our Warner Media Access teams across Turtle Island, conducting a land acknowledgement is deeply connected with our everyday work um, towards the reconciliation. And that work includes supporting the career development and promotion of Indigenous storytellers and content and artists and advocating for a vibrant Indigenous uh, screen-based uh, industry. So for non-Indigenous folks out there who are watching this, we encourage you to find out which territories you're on and explore what this means specific, specifically as people of color in our responsibilities towards building close supportive relationships with our Indigenous cousins in their communities. So with no further ado, let's meet our guests on the writing side, Elisa Lee. Give us a little wave there. You're currently in the Warner Media Access uh, TV Writers Program. You're a Southern California native. Uh, she began her career as a journalist reporting and editing for the lights of Entertainment Weekly, the Los Angeles Times, FoxSports.com, and Women's Health Magazine before realizing that, oh, she'd rather write for television than write about it. Uh, an alum of programs such as CAPE, CBS Writers Mentoring, and NBC WOTC programs, TV programs, Elisa has most rec recently been a writer on the CW's Charmed. On the directing side, hello, Faraday Okoro. Give us a little wave. Hello. Uh, Faraday is currently in the HBO Access Directing Fellowship Program. He is a New York City-based Nigerian-American filmmaker. In 2017, he received $1 million from AT&T to direct his debut feature, Nigerian Prince, which was executive produced by Spike Lee. That's right. He was included in Movie Maker Magazine's inaugural 25 screen screenwriters to watch. And in terms of his education, he has attended Howard University and the NYU Tisch Graduate Film Program. And last but not least, my colleague, dare I say my girl, Grace Moss. <laughs> Give us a little wave. Grace is um, VP of Equity and Inclusion, the pipeline programs for Warner Media. In this role, she helps oversee Warner Media's efforts to expand the talent pool of underrepresented writers and directors and build additional pathways for underrepresented talent. Prior to Warner Media, Grace served as the head of talent development and inclusion 
for NBC Entertainment, as well as development executive at the Style Network. She has worked also as a freelance reality producer and director on numerous unscripted shows on a variety of networks. So we are in very, very good hand is the wonderful panel. So let's dive into our questions. So Grace, we're going to talk a little bit about one of the access programs to give the folks out in the audience uh, a little taste of what we're doing here. So I'd like you to set the table for us. Tell us about the Warner Media Access programs and the types of initiatives you've been uh, building over the past year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a very busy year. Um, at you know as well as I do, you know, leading the efforts on the Canadian side, we have um, a lot of goals that we want to reach, a lot of work that needs to be done. So as far as our programs, you know, Access has this suite of wonderful programs for both above the line and below the line. And what we've been able to launch in 2021 um, is uh, our Access TV Writers Program, which as you know, Elisa is, is a part of. Um, and we're also starting to evolve, um, you know, future iterations of what the director program that Faraday is currently in um, and, you know, how we can continue to enhance enhance that program. Um, we also launched an early career boot camp this past September, which is really for folks um, to for us to feed the pipeline to the pipeline. And so we're looking at young professionals from various underrepresented communities and really giving them insight into all the different types of careers in the industry, um, you know, beyond writing and directing, which we covered, but also what's it like to be a development executive? What is it, is it like to be a marketing um, executive and campaign for all these big shows and series? And so we're really trying to um, address some of these needs and just create the next generation of wonderful, you know, future executives and storytellers. Amazing. You know, I see Grace pretty much like every week and she is working hard hard at work on these fantastic programs and she really puts so much of herself into it and on the canadian side we have um a team of five canadians so for our canadians out in the audience that's right we have stuff for you okay um we have a suite of programs as well writers and directors programs that we're uh, partnering with the, uh, the canadian academy here and that's for experienced writers we have below the line efforts with the canadian version of the x the very very successful U.S. Warner Media Access to Action program. We have uh, a number of other initiatives as well where we're partnering with film festivals and schools and universities and training institutions across the country to uh, deliver programs around below the line training in terms of animation, virtual production, hair and makeup even. So a lot of things happening on the Canadian side as well. And we just love being the uh, the first iteration of Warner Media Access outside of the US. So we're excited to be uh, kind of like a pilot, learning a lot as we go along and and feeding into the, you know, the bigger global goal of bringing these programs across the world. All right, so. Can I add something too, Deanna? Yeah. <laughs> I also want to mention too, you know, um, and beyond Canada as well, we also were able to launch some great opportunities in the UK through our virtual production um, sort of unit, as well as um, on some productions that were happening and looking at crew opportunities for directors of photography and directors as well. So we are really aiming to go global. We, we are currently and hope to expand that in 2022. Amazing, but we're your favorite, right? Canadians yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite office. Okay, I, I won't be so mean. We love our, our global partners in, in, uh, in the UK and around the world as well, um, all working towards the same goal in different countries. So let's move on to our amazing participants who are in the Writers and Directors Program. Elisa, we're going to start with you because it all starts with the writing. It all starts with the written word. You've made that brave career transition from journalism into script writing. Tell us about uh, your goals at this stage of your career and how the Warner Media TV Writers Program is helping you achieve them. Um, yeah, I mean, I have been fortunate enough to, you know, be staffed on a show and be able to write episodes and produce them. Um, and obviously at this goal, like I just, it's to absolutely to continue to work and tell stories and get them out there and produced. And being part of the Warner Media Access Program is absolutely helping to achieve this, first of all, by having us prepare a new sample that reflects our voice and um, who we are as writers. Um, 
And also because, you know, so much of this business is who you know and, you know, having being the right person at the right place at the right time. Um, and like and so being part of this of the Warner Media, you know, company and I, I think really kind of helps to increase our visibility and access to the many different Warner Media properties so that, you know, hopefully we can be put in front of the right people when an opportunity arises. So well said, you know, that pathway, it's a pathway that's existed for everyone else. And I think what's wonderful about what we're doing is, is showing people what that pathway looks like, helping people to get on the pathway that is pretty much for anyone in this business. You have to know people, you have to have people who are in executive positions bringing you in. It's it's the same for everyone, um, re regardless of what background you're from, whether you're from the majority culture or from minority cult uh, minorities, it, it, it takes a village. So uh, we're excited about this now. Faraday, tell us about your uh, your side of things on the directing side. So you've been building, working successfully as a feature film director, which is exciting. Tell us what your main motivation was to join the or apply for the HBO Directors Fellow Fellowship, and um, how it's helping you achieve your goals. So my main objective uh, was to sort of uh, you know dip my foot into uh, TV directing. Um, it's definitely compared to film. It's, uh, I would say, you know, it's it's a smaller community that it. While I would say, um, while I would say, it's e it's become easier for directors to do both TV and film. It's still hard to uh, break into the other when you've already started the other. So this has allowed me to. Um, learn as I go along, uh, make a lot of great uh, contacts. Um, and the program uh, does pair you with uh, a mentor at HPO um, and allows you to take part in uh, shadowing opportunities where you could go on set, you know, learn uh, how directors uh, direct these great programs um, to hopefully one day get an opportunity to direct your own. And um, I have definitely, I'd say, um, achieved that. And hopefully I'll be directing a show soon. All right. I'm actually going to uh, break it down. You know, I'm going to ask you both to actually break it down a little bit more in terms of the day to day, because, the, you know, our audience is watching. They kind of want to have an idea of you know, what's it like on the day-to-day -day in these programs? Like, what are you specifically going through? Elisa, can you just tell us a little bit about, um, is that okay, Grace? That <laughs> All right. Definitely. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, give it, break it down for the audience in terms of, like, what, what are you actually learning? What, what is, what's the day-to-day -day like? How are you connecting with your fellow writers? Um, yeah, like right now we are in the middle of um, an intensive writing exercise to kind of get our samples out there. And it's really been kind of this um, exercise in, you know, like um, in kind of crystallizing our ideas and, you know, and getting it out there. And, you know, so it's like a technical, like learning how to make a pilot that, you know, that works and can launch into a series. And it's also, you know, the, the practice of getting notes from executives, you know, and from brain trust and, you know, like so much of TV is so collaborative, you know, like you have to kind of prove that you can play well with others and, you know, like, and you can hear a note and, you know, respond to it, but also hopefully stay true to your own voice. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of navigating that process as well. And also, you know, just kind of as we go through this, you know, like we have our own, you know, cohorts and, you know, like we are, you know, like we give notes to our, you know, to our fellow, you know, program people's scripts and, um, you know, and kind of build relationships that way. So it's kind of, you know, it's a lot of things at the same time, you know, you're like trying to get a pilot out there and, you know, like you knowing that this is, could be like a sample for you um, and, you know, getting to know your cohort and, you know, contributing to, you know, like pitching ideas for them and then also um, this whole note process and, you know, learning to take notes from executives and um, and apply them um, so that everyone kind of feels seen and, you know, like so that it is a collaborative process that we're all kind of putting this out there together. 
That's wonderful. And and Faraday, take us through a little bit, drill down a little bit into your experience, your day-to-day experience uh, in the fellowship program, director's fellowship program. As mentioned, the pandemic has uh, caused us to sort of reevaluate the program. Uh, so this year has been um, uh, not, I guess, typical. Uh, though I think uh, HPL managed to uh, work with what they were given and really deliver um, a great uh, opportunity. So in my case, uh, pretty much uh, the first week they held uh, master classes where they brought in uh, people in the uh, TV space, whether it was executives, writers, uh, producers or directors to tell us about their experience. And after that week, every month, uh, they also held master classes and they continue to bring uh, those experts to uh, answer questions, to tell us how they approach uh, their given fields. Um, and then outside of the program, uh, our fellows managed to uh, chat with one another uh, on a pretty regular basis to uh, you know, keep each other motivated, to answer perhaps any questions uh, each one of us had. Um, so, and as I mentioned before, uh, HBO pairs you with uh, a mentor, which in my case has been extremely helpful. Um, they sort of are able to take you behind the scenes in a way that's specific uh, to HBO and nail down any specific uh, questions that you know they would know about and also Again, in my case, if you would like, um, you know, additional um, meetings or whatnot, they are a great sort of platform to get that the ball rolling on that. Wonderful, wonderful. And Grace, you know, as a chief architect of these programs, <laughs> uh, can you give the audience just an idea of, I mean, I've been watching you as you build them and the, the intentionality in terms of all the different sections that you build in and why. Can you just give the audience a little bit of a, a taste of the different sections and, and why you've break, built them into the programs? Sure, absolutely. You know, I think um, it, it varies for each program, but I think generally speaking, our main goal is to make sure that the talent that we're working with, writers, directors, comedians, whatever, PAs, are as as well prepared as possible so that they are undeniable to the folks that are hiring them on, on the shows, right? And so I think that is part, um, you know, craft, whether it's a script or um, you know, they're, they're real or helping them, you know, look good on paper with their resumes, all the way to helping them um, just know what those intangibles are, you know, the notes process, this is what it's like, these are the deadlines that you're going to have to get used to hitting, or, you know, handling yourself in these interviews for for shows, like you need to know what is your take on this episode going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And so we really want to arm them with that knowledge. And of course, just the basic industry knowledge that, you know, many of them are already familiar with, but we want to be able to also provide just more nuanced, specific information, especially specific to Warner Media. you know, like how does HBO operate versus, um, you know, the TNET? and what are they looking for? What is their storytelling like? And so really, we really want to do our best to educate them and make sure that they are uber prepared for any opportunity that can come their way within the enterprise. Um, and I think, you know, another intangible too that's really important is just learning how to navigate this space, this industry as a person of color, as a person from a historically ex excluded um, community. And so we have also done um, some sessions on that with, you know, various organizations like the Think Tank for um, Inclusion and Equity and various partner organizations and nonprofits. So we wanted to just go beyond just the nuts and bolts and, uh, you know, mechanics, but also really help them personally um, so that they can make sure that they are successful in these sometimes challenging spaces and um, you know, learn how to manage maybe some microaggressions that might be coming their way. Love that. And, you know, you mentioned nuts and bolts and we, you know, through this last question, we're able to go and at least give the audience a, a shape of what the, the programs are like. 
Now, for the surprising aha moments or takeaways, uh, Grace, I wanted to stay with you because, you know, you spent a lot of time working with a lot of people to build these some of these programs. And we know our team is working hard on, you know, the predictable things, right, with the schedule and what we're going to put into it. But I know that even on our side and the Canadian side, there's some things that have been so surprising. I've run programs before. You've run programs before. But there's always something surprising or an aha thing or like, oh, my gosh, I never thought about that. And we're going to build that into next year. And so I wanted to ask you if you have a couple of uh, had a couple of aha moments or just something surprising that's happened um, as you've been delivering these programs. Yeah, um, I would say I think the biggest thing and this would be whether it's Warner Media or the programs at NBC, I'm, I'm really delightfully surprised at the the community that's being built within each cohort you know going in um you know this is a professional development thing the the goal is to get these folks staffed and that's their goals as well right and so these are highly talented highly ambitious talent um that is you know participating in these programs and so you know one might think okay it might be a little competitive because you know obviously there's only a certain amount of opportunities out there. Um, but I just really am I'm so blessed to see how the cohorts have become so close. Um, I know just as an example with Faraday's co cohort in the directing program, because they started, you know, basically when the whole pandemic was happening and their meetings have primarily, I mean, almost all of them have been um, virtual. And so to see the closeness of the group especially in such a traumatic time, I think is really beautiful. And I think that's one thing that we're also really trying, learning to instill now, knowing that, okay, it's not just about the job and having a great like uh, new project or sample. It goes beyond that. It's really about the community and the family, not to sound cheesy, but it's so true that you are building and creating and nurturing. Um, I was meeting with um, a, a writer and she was saying how she continues to read everybody's scripts, even though she doesn't have to, you know, and I think that's, I had just assumed everybody would just continue to focus on their work, right? And because it's a lot of scripts to read outside of your own, um, you know, sample that you're trying to generate. And I'm just really happily surprised by that. I'm like, that's really great that you all are putting in just, you know, extra time into work beyond your own. And I think that's been a, a nice surprise for me. Oh, that's so important. And we're finding that on the on the Canadian side too. And and, and as we're saying, you know, TV is a collaborative business. It, these are going to be the people in your writer's room. And so you're making those those friends and and connections, but also, you know, feeding your soul, right? We, you know, as people of color, we need to you know, band together and, and, and um, help. Okay. Now I'm going to go off, but I don't want to, but, uh, but I, I think that's been one of the most, I don't know if it's surprising. I guess it's surprising every time, but it's just, I don't know why it should be surprising. And I think it's yeah. because it's cutthroat world. We think that everyone's just going to be super competitive and go mm -hmm. for their own thing, but it's just, it's amazing to see time and again, and it goes across our other programs as well, that people in the program band together and they, and they hold on to each other for support. Um, uh, Elisa and Faraday, I wanted to ask you about your aha moments and they might be similar to, to um, Grace's or it might be different, but I would love to hear yours. Faraday, I'm going to start with you actually. Um, any aha moments or, or big takeaways that you um, are experience, experiencing in the program? I Personally, my aha moment came when I had the opportunity to shadow um, this was actually not too long ago, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, I was on set and uh, it was my first time being a part of a TV set. And I think that, um, you know, beforehand, I perhaps had my own uh, preconceived notions. And my first day was definitely, it seemed very big. Uh, as I uh, came back day after day, spoke to more people it reminded me a lot of what I had been previously doing with indie films and short films. After a while, it became, you know, a sort of tight knit, close family. It definitely seemed smaller, um, and I think for me, that just helped a lot. It made me realize this is not something that one has to, you know, be overly anxious or scared. 
uh, you do have a family here who's going to help you uh, direct your episode and that you will be able to keep in touch with the network and so on and so forth. So that was my aha moment. I love that. Uh, Alisa, what was your aha, mo aha moment or any kind of takeaways that you are you know, writing, jotting down in your book for the future? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that my, uh, it's, it, it, it's similar to what Grace is talking about, you know, like you go into these programs because you think, you know, like, oh, it's like the technical stuff. Like I have to learn how to take a meeting. I have to learn to distill who I am, but it is the relationships that you end up forming, like both with the people that you're in the program with, like I've done a bunch of programs and I'm still in touch, you know, like I was in the CBS program and we still have our, you know, like our group text chain going and, you know, and, you know, I'm still in touch with my, like, is some writers on the verge people. Like I've joined writer groups with them. And, um, and also, I mean, I think like kind of in that sense, like a, a takeaway for me is that, you know, like once these programs end, you know, like that's not necessarily the end of it. Um, and, you know, cause I have done a couple programs, like I did CBS and I wasn't staffed right away. And so I did Writers on the Verge. And then after that, I was able to get a meeting for a CBS show, you know, and I was able to get the job because of my connection with CBS. So, you know, and that was like two years before. So, I mean, I think in that sense, like it's all kind of, I think that's my takeaway. It's like, it's all cumulative. It's all working towards something, you know, it's all about you building relationships, you know, both at the, you know, the executive and the mentor level, but also, you know, with the people that you're in the programs with. Um, so yeah, that's my takeaway. Oh, love it. Okay. So well, let's move on to um, providing some tips for our audience on how to uh, apply. So, uh, let me ask Lisa and Faraday, with the knowledge that you've gained in the programs so far and thinking back on your own applications, uh, what kind of tips would you or advice would you give to people who are interested in applying? Uh, I will go start with you, Elisa. Tips um, for applying. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just it's to kind of not be afraid of who you are. So basically, you're kind of selling yourself as a person who has their own story to tell and are able to tell it in their own very unique way. And to kind of, to be able to kind of lean into that, you know, like whether it's based off of, you know, your life experience or, you know, your perspective on the world. Um, and I guess it would just be to kind of, to not be afraid of your own truth and to kind of let that shine because that's, that is what people are going to invest in, I think in the program. And also, you know, like when they go to hire you in the room. Wonderful. And Faraday, any tips for applicants out there? I would say um, this might sound a bit obvious, um, but I think being doing your research, really finding out what the program has to offer and then applying when you believe you're, you're ready, essentially. Um, I think a lot of people perhaps maybe, you know, they've done only a, a short film, um, or it, it, the project that they've done perhaps doesn't represent them as honestly as, uh, as it could. Um, so applying when you're ready. And then also uh, at some point you do have to realize what types of uh, television uh, programs you'd be interested in making. I think when you've passed that initial stage and uh, you're now talking to um, the execs, uh, that becomes a question that, you get asked often. Wonderful. And Grace, you have read a lot of applications. <laughs> you have seen a lot of things. Um, in terms of uh, you know, advice for people who are applying, what are some of the common mistakes you've seen? And what are some of the great things that people can do to really help their applications stand out? Yeah. Um, Wow. Uh, there's a couple things, you know, as far as um, common mistakes or missteps, I would say, you know, I think when applying to these programs, what we're looking for is somebody who is very um, sort of aware of their voice and their point of view, whether it's a writer, director. And so I think when submitting their portfolio, making sure that there is um, some consistency and cohesion in the work. Um, so if you are a drama director, let's say, and your portfolio is a series of, you know, comedy sketches, that's maybe not the right 
samples to submit and same goes for for writing um, so i think making sure that there is a very clear through line through all of your work and even continuing into the essay questions or personal statements because we don't just ask for you know your bio and your work we also want to get to know you a little better so really thinking of these essay questions as an additional platform for you to share your story in your own unique way um, so that's important. And I would say actually that carries on even further into the interview phase. So when we're meeting with um, talent, and this is actually for general meetings too, I think I am very much looking to see how has your personal experience impacted the way you tell these stories. Um, you know, I think great if you've got wonderful degrees and went to this film school and all that, but I want to see how you can. Um, sort of be able to discuss that in the room and make it very clear to me that your unique perspective is, is truly yours and is seen in your work. Um, I think some just logistical things, this is especially for the writers, like just grammar and typos and misspellings in the script are like huge. And I know that's cliche, but it is so true. And that still happens like to this day, because once you see it, um, a couple times in the first few pages, it just becomes focused on that and you just want to stop reading. Um, yeah. So I think that's something that's really important. Um, yeah. I think those are just some, some things to think about. Oh my gosh. I had a visceral reaction to the, <laughs> the typos oh, because it's true. And we think that, oh, it's not a big deal. And, but you know, it, it stops you. It jars you. And yes. you may reinterpret like you're in, am I reading this wrong? And then you have to read it again. And then you have to read it again in time. Like you got a pile of scripts to read. And if you can't just flow through someone's script, you know, and they're not helping you like think of the reader, think of the yes. reader when you're writing these things. It, it, it really stops you. And then you're just frustrated. I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry. I can't do it because you didn't. Yeah. It. I don't even, I could go on forever. We could have a whole panel about that. <laughs> so I'm glad you raised it, but I'm keeping my eye on the time. Um, I want to talk to, you know, Grace, this is a question is for you, leveraging the opportunities. So once writers and directors like Elisa and Faraday uh, complete your programs, how do you continue to advocate for them and connect them with the right opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the good thing here at Warner Media is that we have an additional pillar. So my team is very much focused on just the pipeline programs, right? And we have a separate pillar uh, that focuses on content and staffing and working with showrunners. So we partner very closely. And I love that they're dedicated to that because, um, you know, at, at previous jobs, we, our team had to do everything. Um, so now we have have sort of the manpower to really dedicate the right time and, and energy to these important sort of facets of getting people staffed. So we work very closely with the content team. Um, the VP on that end, Yvette Urbina, is she has her finger on the pulse across all the networks and has great relationships with all the programming and current executives and development executives too, to really be able to help us forecast what some of the needs will be. Um, and so with that, you know, we work very closely with her to know like, hey, this show is looking for this. And then we will curate a list of folks that we think would be a good fit. Um, and so we do that for specific shows, but then just generally once programs are completed, we will circulate the portfolios of all of the participants to all the programming teams across the enterprise. So not just HBO and Max, but you know, Warner Brothers and, and the T-Nets so that everybody is fully aware of the talent. Um, and then we also help facilitate general meetings with everybody. So this is really an initiative that we're trying to um, just get off the ground and really become make it become a uh, best practice. And for our executives to know like they can come to us for great talent referrals. And so that's gonna be something where we are, you know, obviously meeting new talent from our programs, but from outside as well, whether it's from agents and managers who are making recommendations or just seeing the standouts from the different film festivals. And then we get to sort of vet them and meet them and those that we think are, um, you know, ready for staffing or make a good fit for a specific show, we will also help facilitate those introductions. So. I think just as a whole, the way that this this 
uh, pillar operates is to obviously go to where the talent is and find them, whether it's by way of a program or festival or whatever it is. And then the second part is building that capability. And then the third part is making those connections to our executives to help make that into um, a hiring opportunity. Amazing. I mean, that's just such a, a powerful pillar, um, a powerful structure to have those pillars. And when we think of pillars, we really think of something that's supporting, you know, a framework and um, having this kind of structure is is really like you kind of it is unique. It is different and it is intentional. So um, I'm excited to be part of it, quite frankly. So next questions uh, really about the social impact of the last we can't you know, we obviously can't talk about anything in our lives without talking about the last 18 months about the the racial reckoning um that stemmed from the murder of george floyd and brianna taylor and so many others the anti-asian uh violence um and and in here in canada the discovery of uh not discovery i'll say the identification because we've known that these um uh, burial sites have been around for quite some time, burial sites with children from the uh, residential schools, indigenous children. So much has happened um, in the last 18 months uh, in our lives. And my question to you is, uh, Faraday and Elisa, how have the last, or have they, uh, the last few, almost two years now, um, affected your approach to storytelling? And um, how do these programs help you navigate you know, how you help you bring that in, maybe put it into your work or maybe not even putting it into your work. So it's just really the impact of the outside world on your on your abilities as a as a creator, as creators. So I'll start with Faraday. Yes. Um, for me, I would say it hasn't affected it as much in that um, these topics are things that uh, my colleagues and I, my peers, my friends, uh, you know, um, amongst us, we've been talking about it uh, with each other and have been putting it into our work for years. Um, and I think that for the the, the greater public, uh, it's definitely has have uh, it's been put on their radar. Um, and I think that these programs, uh, if anything, has allowed us to uh, voice those uh, our our you know voice our uh, opinions and thoughts uh, in a way that we haven't uh, had the opportunity uh, before. Thank you. And Elisa? Um, yeah, I agree. Like the, the, the things in the past 18 months, like it really helps to kind of put a spotlight on this. And I think it was really kind of, it's eye-opening and um, kind of depressing, like just in terms of what, uh, what maybe the national perception is or what it, the media perception is. And it really kind of showed me that, you know, like how much representation matters. Um, and and uh, it's really kind of forced me. And just like speaking as an Asian American, like, um, you know, like in the height of the anti-Asian sentiment, like I remember like a poll came out and it was like 42% of people like couldn't name a prominent Asian American. And like the person that they could name was like Bruce Lee, who's like awesome, but you know, he hasn't, he, he died like 50 years ago, you know? And so, like to me, like the takeaway was like, okay, so people hate us, but you don't even know us. And so I think like that is kind of like, okay, so it just, it just confirmed again that like representation matters. And in terms of like myself as like a creator and, as, you know, like a storyteller, like just to be more intentional, you know, in, in the storytelling and, and to really think about what it is that we're trying to say, you know, and like, if you have this platform, you know, to make it, make sure to be like, to be authentic and, you know, to, yeah. And just to, to kind of be more intentional um, because it, it, it is like, it, and we could, media can help change perceptions and, you know, and it's important to, to do that. Oh, you just said something there, you know what? Yeah. There are a lot of haters, but there are a lot of people who there's a lot of love out there too. Uh, you know, this this program, I can feel it every day when I go to work, you know, with people like Grace and on our Canadian teams and all that. There's so much. It comes from a place of love and commitment. So I just want to leave people, you with that and also the the audience with that as well, that there's um, there's something cathartic about being part of these pro these programs and grappling with the difficulties and knowing that there's a lot of positive things that are happening as well. Um, I'm looking at the time and I wanted to, the last question is about the future. What is next? What is next 
um, for our participants. Faraday, tell us what's next on the horizon for you. And at least I'll ask you to follow up as well. What's what's next for you? Oh, so, sorry, Faraday, uh, yes. I have uh, three projects that I'm attached to direct, uh, two of which I hope to shoot uh, sometime early to mid uh next year, at least one of them. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to at least shoot two. Um, and then I'm also writing a feature screenplay about Who's and Then with um, Wavelength Productions. Wonderful. And Elisa? Um, well, I'm finishing out the program um, and I have various projects in various stages of development um, and also kind of looking for my next staffing opportunity. Excellent. And Grace, as we head into 2022, oh my gosh, already, uh, what's on the horizon? What do we have coming up for the people, for the folks? Yeah, yeah, a lot. We um, actually just opened submission windows for our animation shorts program, which is in partnership with HBO Max. Um, and we also just launched a program with DC um, called Next Generation DC, which focuses on the Milestone Initiative, which back in the 90s, Milestone was a comic uh, universe created by Black, um, Black comic writers and artists. And so with a relaunch of that, we wanted to launch a program to find the next generation of underrepresented uh, comic creators. So that is currently um, in the submission process and will uh, the actual summit will happen um, in 2022. And we're also developing a comedy writers program. We're looking into a short film festival. Um, uh, we also want to expand upon our alternative program and maybe look into alternative directing as well. And so we have, have many things to sort of continue to work on for 2022. It's gonna be very busy. Oh, right. Okay, wonderful. So with that, we're gonna wrap it up. I wanna say thank you to our amazing guests, Elisa, Faraday, Grace, for being so generous with your time and your comments to help our audience understand just what Warner Media Access programs are about, how to get in, how to be amazing, um, and what's so unique about them. And I wanna thank Tide uh, for this forum, specifically to Ji Young for founding this whole wonderful uh, festival. Jane, you for supporting us through this planning and um, Jasmine Stewart for this smooth, amazing technical production. So with that, we'll say have a wonderful day to everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and in a very WB kind of ending. That's all folks. <laughs>